Hi, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by Margie Olson, who is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is actually quite pleasant today. Yes, it is. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Margie is an executive coach and leadership team development expert with a doctorate in organization development. She delivers her coaching with practical strategies and actions for leaders and their leadership teams to build the right foundation for teamwork and productivity. Uh, and you have helped companies across industries such as aeronautics, agriculture, financial services, fintech, healthcare, and many more. And you work with senior leaders and leadership teams to become cohesive, high-performing teams, which translate to high performance among their own teams. And what we're going to talk about today is leadership and leadership development. So, um, Margie, let's let's bottom line this from the beginning. From your point of view, can you give me a definition of what you believe real leadership is? Because I do think that people still have different ideas of what leadership actually is. So the definition of leadership has to do with what's the job of leaders? What's the main reason an organization will bring on a leader and provide resources to them? It's so that they, the people that they represent, that they lead, can be successful. And the truth is, whether you're a sales organization or a sales company, any organization that has multiple divisions with leaders who are representing X amount of people, we are not training leaders the way we train somebody or expect someone to come on trained who is legal or HR, leadership comes about because maybe you got promoted into a role. And that would be the equivalent of saying, well, I went to school for several years as a 12 year old and a 15 year old and a 17 year old. So when I'm done, they'll let me be a teacher now because yeah. I've been in the school system for all this time. When the truth is, if you are preparing to be a leader or you're promoting somebody into leadership, or maybe you're developing a leadership program at your company, you really are not able to understand what it takes in order for that to happen. So you try things, you offer classes, you bring in consultants, mm -hmm. you coach, but it's not working. So my definition of leadership is that you lead people so that they can succeed. And after three decades in corporate America, I went back to college and earned my doctorate in organization development to sort of look under the hood of companies mm -hmm. and understand why do companies struggle with leaders and their teams. And to my surprise, we already knew what we needed to know. The art and science of leadership has been around for decades. Now it's been another 10 years, so 40 years or more. So I focused my research, my dissertation on, okay, if we know what we need to know and we do, why do organizations struggle? And they do. So it has now become my passion to come and help organizations do the things they need to do so that it does finally, quote unquote, take and the changes can finally stick. Yeah, thank you. That was fantastic. And and one thing here is, and and this is isn't just uh, happening in corporate America. I mean, it happens everywhere now. But we seem to be very limited in our thinking, right? We have we only have one career path in most organizations, or one perceived career path, as you said. Uh, uh, it means if I'm good at something and good at doing my job, the next thing is, oh, I want to. I'll be a team leader, and then I'll be a a, a, de a department leader, and then I'll be a VP. But it's always this thing of of that the only career path is to lead people. And that's how we've kind of created it. But yet not everybody is suited to that. Not everybody is good at that. But if we're going to, as you say, if we're going to put people in these positions, the least we can do is actually prepare them and train them and help them. And if they're not suitable to be leaders, find an alternative way of, of giving them a career path that, that, uh, that uh, maximizes their strengths. Correct. And many times I come into an organization and certain leaders are blamed for not being effective leaders, not being effective uh, uh, division persons mm -hmm. in their fields, the subject matter expertise, they're not able to work with others. And so I might hear a leader confide in me that we're really, we have them on a performance improvement plan. Mm -hmm. We're really going to move them out of the organization. But when we start to step back, take some time and energy, put some investment in putting the right building blocks in place, you find that some people rise to the occasion and become effective leaders. They just really didn't know how to do that before, or they're sort of hiding. They've had the natural ability, but in the culture they're in, 
What if your whole company or your whole division is a sales culture and the only mm -hmm. metric they ever looked at is a, a dollar amount? So mm -hmm. there are some people there who may be natural at the things that we talk about and I bring into organizations at, as leaders, but they have to keep their head down because the politics prevent them from uh, starting programs or insisting on being developed. And when we bring in new people, we just sort of hand them the reins and say, good luck, rather than uh, training them and building them. So I developed what I call top team accelerator. And that is a methodology for leadership teams and the, the senior leader to methodically move through development. So no matter where you are, whether you're a blank canvas because you're brand new or you've been around for a little while and you're growing or you have grown, you've been around for a long while and you might think we can't turn this around. It's too late. We are well established. The truth is you can always turn it around. We come in and we put the building blocks in place and there are four of them. Teamwork, which is knowing each other and beginning to build cohesion. Commitment, which is the combination of clarity and alignment so that the boats in your company are rowing in the direction mm -hmm. of the leader's goals um, and or your division. Um, accountability, which is really do you have the operations of today or the operations from the past? And your meetings are terrible. And I can mm -hmm. just say that without knowing you because most companies have uh, meetings yep. that are terrible. We, that is an easy fix. And the reason you have that challenge is because of other issues you have in place. Mm -hmm. So as we start to move through those issues and solve for them, your meetings get a lot better. And then the final pillar is performance, which is pulling it all together and then creating the right kind of metrics to watch this. So sometimes your changes don't stick because you take your eye off the ball or you go back to fighting fires or solving the same problems over and over again. By the time we get to the performance pillar, you have freed up time and energy to be able to deal with the real issues because the other pieces are up and running. And when clients fix their meetings and they start to build a cohesive team and the gossiping goes down and the mm -hmm. complaining goes down and the leader's goals are the thing that they can recite off the top of their head, when that starts to happen, you become high-performing leaders and high-performing teams just because you've grown that and you didn't even know that you didn't know how to do that. Right. No, that's that, that, that's a great great framework. So, what are some of the what are some of the traits that you look for for? So, if anybody's if anybody's listening in and they have leadership aspirations, what are some of the traits that you look for, or what are some of the characteristics that you look for? So, number one is self awareness. Uh, and I define self-awareness mm -hmm. as I'm aware of other people's behaviors and communications on what happens with me when that's happening. And I'm aware of my behaviors and my communications on others. And when we move through the different pillars of Top Team Accelerator, we're developing what I call team awareness, mm -hmm. which is I'm a leader, but I'm part of a group. I'm not just focusing on my own self-awareness. I am learning to be self-aware as a collective with the team. Now, you might hear that self-awareness is an important trait for leaders, but almost nobody can say, and here's a way to get at it at, yep. as an adult uh, in your develop, develop, development. You absolutely can grow self-awareness. So wherever you're at, I meet you where you are. You're somewhere. You're somewhere on the spectrum of a level of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And uh, the for one of the first things I did growing my own self-awareness was going to therapy learning about my behavior, learning about boundaries, learning about healthy relationships. Uh, there are exercises that we do with leaders and leadership groups around uh, understanding what the work is and knowing uh, what the goals are of the leader and how my team and the goals of my team fit that to get the boat mm -hmm. throwing in the same direction. It might seem unusual, but when you can, when the leader is uh, make sure that the leadership team members are well versed in what those three or four main goals are and mm -hmm. what today's priorities are. And each of those leadership teams, instead of being a silo or going off and rowing in another direction, they're rowing in the direction of your goals. Your team members are rowing in the direction of your goals. That builds self-awareness mm -hmm. because you are applying your thinking processes to what is what the real important stuff at work? Otherwise, you can be all over the place. There's a yeah. hundred things in anybody's day. But when you're not focused, then you can feel splayed and not be really clear. When you have clarity and the team members of the leadership team are aligned and you turn around and create clarity and alignment among your own team, your self-awareness goes up. So yeah. self-awareness. Another is I would say that people underestimate the leadership development that happens when you look at your habits. So when you're leading mm -hmm. all day long, those are habits. Mm 
So if you're familiar with uh, James Clear, Atomic Habits, we do not rise to yeah. the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our habits. Yeah. So you may think, oh, she's talking about going to the gym or she's talking about applying yeah. a new eating program or I'm going to develop a better communication with someone in my family. The truth is, from the very beginning of your workday to the very end of your workday as a leader, those are habits. How yeah. you do your meeting, those are habits. How mm -hmm. you do your performance management, those are habits. How you come in and fight fires and always solve the same problems over and over again, those are habits. Your leadership abilities go way up when you pause, take a step back, and we do that together, and just build the building blocks for how to effectively lead in those four pillars. And then we address the habits so that you don't revert back. Mm -hmm. Many organizations, many leadership teams, many leaders, they do make some changes. They fix their meetings because it's doable and the information's already out there. They build, they take some steps to do cohesion because the information is out there. Yeah. But then they go back to work and they haven't built in steps to monitor it, to right. help when it's not going well, to build new habits. The brain goes right back to the old way because that's easier mm -hmm. saving up brain space for <laughs> keeping me alive and new opportunities. Yeah. So we lead the brain to develop leadership habits and between self-awareness and team awareness and then self and team awareness and new habits, leaders become a uh, highly high performers right. and leading their teams to high performance. Yeah, no, I did. It's good. I'd, I'd highly recommend that atomic habits book, to be honest. I think it's, it's, it's very easy to implement actually. And, you know, changing habits, we always perceive as being very, very difficult, but actually it's a great framework on how to do it. Uh, and, and I totally agree with you on self-awareness. I think self-awareness is the hardest thing in many ways. It's the thing that holds people back the most from, uh, progressing in their life, in, in their career. Uh, it requires a little bit of introspection, which unfortunately we live in a culture today where we're almost dissuaded from any introspection because we're distracted all the time and we are entertained all the time. But I think it is, it is so, that piece is so critical. And I also wanted to talk to you about the accountability piece, because I always, I always laugh about accountability because people will you'll always say like, oh yes, I'm, I'm totally in favor of accountability. But what they mean, generally speaking, is that uh, I'm really in favor of holding other people accountable. Correct. And accountability starts with yours truly, right? It does. And also it's unfair to say today I'm going to be holding people accountable yeah. when I haven't put in place the expectations and mm -hmm. for what I am going to hold them accountable for. And I haven't given them make sure that they have what they need to be successful. So I would say the piece about accountability reverts refers back to what makes a, an effective leader. And you grow your self-awareness and your team awareness when you're having real conversations. Mm -hmm. So you talked about how hard it is to develop habits, how hard it is to, to develop leaders. It's because we're not having real conversations. It is virtually impossible for me to increase my self-awareness if I'm going around my day having to just say whatever fits the conversation and just right. telling people what they want to hear. On one level, it doesn't feel comfortable for me, even if it's unconscious, but also we're not getting anywhere. We're just keeping things the same. The way to keep things the same is to not have real conversations. And the reason I I put accountability as the third pillar is it really doesn't work for clients to start there. If you haven't been doing it before, you run the risk of um, coming down heavy on someone who's not ready for it. Or uh, we start with the leaders not comfortable holding people accountable. And they might know on some unconscious level, they're not able to hold people accountable because they didn't put the steps in place. So we start with making sure that people really know who each other is on the team and you get the gossip and the complaining and the politics to go down. And then we focus on clarity and alignment for um, what are the leader's goals? So what are we going after this year? And not just a metric around the dollars. What are we going after for which other changes we're going to make so that we can be successful next year? What are the three main goals that we're going after? And I need all those boats to roll in that direction. And then each of those leadership team members has their own team. And so does each of those team members know what their role is? Mm -hmm. how it fits into the broader goals of the company or the leader, and then how their team fits and do they have what they need. Once you put all that in place, and by the way, I just what I just described is not rocket science and it doesn't mm -hmm. cost any more money. You do need to focus on different things and take time away from the fires and the problems that never get seem to get solved. Once you put those pieces in place, 
Now you're in a much more comfortable position to hold people accountable, but not with hitting them over the head, not with some bring the hammer down quarterly or annually in some performance management system, no, in conversations every week, because now we've normalized talking about how it's going. We normalize having conversations with the people that we that report to us, because remember, that's mm -hmm. my most important job. So the people that report to me know what the goals are, what our team's goals are, what your individual role is. Do you have what you need? And here's how I think it's going. Mm -hmm. Once you do all of that, accountability starts to become a capability that's pretty normal. Yeah. And no, I love what you said also. And about the performance reviews, I, I can't stand all that uh, annual performance review nonsense, to be honest. I, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's fine if you're doing pay reviews or whatever. But I think, as you said, it's all about the ongoing interaction conversations. And, and so a performance review should be it's it's like an ongoing thing that's happening throughout your your conversations. And uh, and what I like also is is you don't have to be in a leadership position initially to display leadership right Absolutely. You, can, you can show that you can number one leading yourself i mean you can be uh, and you can and you can display um, leadership traits so um i always tell people that you should also look at investing in yourself not wait for the company to invest in you and what I love about this approach with leaders and their leadership teams is everybody wins. The individual, no matter where they end up working long, yeah. uh, away from now, uh, it's a much better investment for the company, even if they leave after a short amount of time, or it makes their lives better. Five, 10, 15 people in the world are affected by one person's day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. one person in your company, you're leading your company, one person is affecting 5, 10, 15 people out in the community. What a great world we have when leadership is going in that direction. And then if you are an individual contributor and you're not necessarily interested in leadership, everything that you do that lowers the number of conversations you have to have that are not real, every meeting that you fix, stop having all these meetings where you're not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Every time that you increase your own self-awareness and interact more effectively, effectively with your team members, your life has just gotten, the quality of your life has just gone up. And you may then find, I do want to be a leader because I have developed those qualities. Right, right. And the, the other part I think is, is it, it, it's very challenging nowadays, obviously, because uh, I think we have Somebody told me like five generations, the most generations in the workplace. Ever in the workplace. Five. five, yeah, apparently five. I can't remember what the fifth one is, but uh, but the point being is that we have lots of different people at different stages of their careers, of their lives, different perspectives, different ways of communicating, different ways of receiving information. So it has it has become a little bit more more complex um, for leaders, but it means they have to have that additional level of awareness of the fact that you may be able to communicate with me very directly and in my face verbally. And I'd be like, yep, okay, got it. No problem. That's fine. That's how I like people to communicate. But there may be other people who you have to provide a lot more context to, or you have to communicate in a, in a different way. So it's, it, it's, it's getting a little more complicated. It is, but the beauty of doing this work and developing a high performing, cohesive leadership team that cascades by nat nature throughout the company is these issues that seem like they're insurmountable, mm -hmm. like they're overwhelming, um, the economy, the marketplace, the, you know, what's happening globally, uh, the yeah. coming out of the pandemic. Are we remote? Are we hybrid? Are we in person? Five generations in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the trauma and the changes that we made with our behaviors by having a global pandemic and being at home and now we're back out into the world. You people think I can't solve any of that. Nobody can solve any of that. That's yeah. true. But guess what you're missing when you pull together the the division leader or the company leader and their leadership team to become clear with each other about the direction you're heading and aligned on how that means each of their teams fits and being able to have open conversations and fix your meetings and being able to hold people accountable. What happens is you've just freed up not a little bit, a lot of time and energy to be able to 
go off and look at those issues. You're not going to solve them for the globe, mm -hmm. but you actually yeah. can solve them for your company because you're missing the collective creative energy, the innovation, all of the different styles that you have on your team where some people are geniuses at some of this. If mm -hmm. you free up time to be able to have conversations that you don't know how they're going to end, you don't know what the answer is already, you're now comfortable because you've increased your self-awareness and you've developed team awareness as a leader. You're now comfortable not having to know everything, you really have energized and unleashed the abilities across the X amount of leaders. That's where you really have uh, high performance and you can start to check off these big issues from your list. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely because uh, I always say like, uh, if you can, if you can affect positively those around you, it's far, you're going to have a far greater impact on the world if everybody did that than if you sit around on a Friday night pontificating about the your problems of the world because you, know, you, you can't do anything about most of them. No. But you can affect people who are around you in a positive fashion. And if everybody did that, it's it's a uh, it uh, compounds as as you know. Um, one last thing I just wanted to to ask you um, quickly as well is um, just around around uh, around teams in general and the, and the concept of teamwork uh, because I think that's I think that's something that sometimes people don't understand uh, it, you know the the concept of what real teamwork is and how it's like maximizing the input of everybody and the strengths and the other thing is we're we're trapped also in this culture we talked about performance reviews we're trapped in this culture where that we love to focus on weaknesses right you know mm -hmm. i mean most performance reviews are like, well, Marjorie, yes, you did these two things really well this year, but here's 54 things to work on that you didn't do so good. Instead of going, why don't we focus on people's strengths and figure out how we can leverage them and optimize them? And if they have particular weaknesses in it, maybe there are things they're never going to be any good at. So why are you wasting your time? Like take that stuff away from them, focus them on where they're strong. And Top Team Accelerator, one of the aspects is we appreciate the anatomy of the brain. We've learned so mm -hmm. much about the anatomy of the brain <clears throat> since we've had imaging technology and even especially the last 10 years. We know that if someone feels judged or they've launched into some feelings of shame or they're sort of sitting back, we can see on the imaging the areas that light up in the brain mm -hmm. and they're not high performance areas. Mm -hmm. You're not committing things to memory. You're not tapping your creativity. You are literally saving yourself from this moment by, by going inward. So mm -hmm. when you want to help people be more successful, you need to meet them where they are and make it be okay to have the conversations and assure them that the goal is not to secretly do something behind their back yep. to make it harder for them, that you genuinely are appreciating the brain, appreciating leadership habits, appreciating how we really don't develop leaders. And we're going to start that now. And then we're going to give people a chance. So I have worked with clients who were ready to just let go of people. I worked with a client who had a nine month transformation. They were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on it and getting nowhere because they hadn't formed together as a team. When right. we put those pieces in place, all of a sudden produ productivity skyrockets. Teamwork is not sitting around and doing trust falls or getting to know each other <laughs> over a beer. It really is understanding who you are and where you're at relative to where my I am and my team and you start to work much better together. But you're not gonna be able to do that if the person's brain is going, I can't take this information in, so I'm going to check out. Yeah, no, that's it's an excellent point. Well, listen, thanks uh, Margie. All of Margie's information is going to be below this video, so please go check it out. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. So yeah, I work with co uh, leadership and their leadership team. So it might be a company CEO or executive director, or it might be a large division. Um, so that leader learns how to develop as a leader, no matter what their experience is, because most people do not have that, even if they're not telling people that. They, they each think they're mm -hmm. the only ones. And then help their leadership team develop as a high-performing leadership team. And then it cascades throughout the company. And so that's one of the great benefits. And so I'm at um, olson-consulting.com where you find all kinds of free resources, immediately implementable activities to help you fix your meetings and become more cohesive today. Yeah, I would encourage you, go check it out. Uh, leadership is just one of those things that... Uh, you know, we, we need to spend more time on and we need to invest more in because, I mean, there's a lot of people in leadership positions today who are, 
suffering from imposter syndrome or, you know, just trying to, are there going, Ugh, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, and that never leads to good outcomes. And they think they're the only ones. They and literally they think they're the only ones mm -hmm. because they're not talking about this yes. at, on the golf course. They're not talking about <laughs> this when they go to conferences or when they're in their mastermind group. They're, they think it's not okay to talk about because they think they're the only one. Bring it up. You're not the only one. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And work on that self-awareness because that's one of the greatest things. I mean, it's the it's the greatest gift you can give yourself. Unfortunately, most of us leave it uh, a little later in life to figure this out. I would encourage you to go on that journey as uh, maybe we were, maybe we have to because maybe we're not ready earlier on. But I would, if you can, go on your journey of self-awareness as soon as you can. Agreed. So, listen, thanks, Margie. Thank you for watching and listening and I will see you all again soon. Yeah.